Hi, today I like to make a b**ing button. Yes, a b**ing button. With this button, whenever you want to you just press the button and you I know for a fact that a lot of people prefer b**ing rather than, well, not b**ing. You know, sometimes in the heat of the moment, you feel passionate and just want to do it. But if you are quick, you can stop yourself and instead press the b**ing button. It could save your career. B**ing is basically a... Will you please stop censoring my b**ing words? Thank you. Stop it! I'm just saying bleep. A bleeping button. Basically, I want to make a button that when you press, it makes a bleeping sound, which is like a one kilohertz sine wave. Like What is it good for? I was thinking during live streams or conversations or meetings even, when you feel angry and want to swear, you can just convey your feelings by pressing the bleeping button. Like holy b**** you'll get it off your chest and feel good. Everyone knows what you mean, but you don't have to actually swear. And people can use their imagination to fill the bleep with whatever word they want. What if in their heads they fill the blank with something very offensive and you end up getting cancelled for a bleeping sound? Well, let me know how it will work for you. Now you might think, what a boring project, just a button that makes a sound. Oh yeah? Then why don't you go to my sponsor Curiosity Stream and watch a documentary instead? Seriously, Curiosity Stream is a subscription streaming service that offers thousands of superb documentaries and non-fiction titles including exclusive originals from some of the world's best filmmakers. Excluding me, I guess. And through curiositystream.com slash electroboom, you get 25% off your unlimited access to this treasure box for only $14.99 a year. That's around what other services charge monthly. So use it. Now let's make the button anyway. To make this, a lot of people just whip out an Arduino board or something and program it to output the signal they need, which can be quite beneficial because you have the flexibility to change the shape and frequency. And we are not here to do software. What? You write some code and suddenly you know electronics? You don't know a damn thing. And I still don't know how to program Arduino. So we do electronics. This is where my stash of broken junk becomes handy because in there, I can find a headset out of which I can harvest a speaker. Here is the speaker. The headset speakers don't output much audio though. They are not made to yell. But let's see, I connected it to my function generator at one volt amplitude, which is the maximum these guys should take. And <laughs> it sounds weak. Like when you stub your toe. But the main reason for the weakness is that this speaker doesn't have an acoustic chamber as is. An acoustic chamber, if I'm calling it right, is basically a cavity in front of the speaker with some holes that the sound comes out of. All audio products must have it. As they say, what an acoustic chamber does is that it provides some impedance matching, which is basically helping to pair the very hard surface of the speaker diaphragm to the very soft surrounding air. The chamber creates an acoustic pressure in front of the speaker that provides a more gradual transition between hard to soft and maximizes the energy transfer. But every acoustic chamber has a specific resonance frequency. Just search for Helmholtz resonance to understand it better. But basically, the resonance frequency of the chamber is dependent on the volume of its cavity and the area of its opening, among other things. We naturally use this by adjusting our mouth cavity and its opening, like... <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> Adjusting the chamber resonance to the frequency we want to output maximizes its volume. See my little speaker, if I put my hand around it... Well, the audio is already louder, but if I make the hole smaller... It rises to a peak and if I go any further, it becomes smaller. Only at a certain hole size, I get the maximum volume, which is where the resonance of the cavity is matching my speaker frequency. 
Let's see if I can plot some sort of frequency response for my speaker. I put a condenser microphone in front of my speaker that I have to bias externally. I sweep frequencies from the function generator over the speaker. The microphone picks it up and scope will plot it. Of course, it's just for reference. Nothing is calibrated here. There we go. There, and this is what I hear too. Weak low frequency response, the audio level rises with frequency, but above 10K, the level just drops again. So let's make a chamber for the speaker. I'm going to use a drug bottle for my chamber because it's rigid and won't vibrate with air. And in hindsight, I should have called it a medicine bottle. here by putting some electric tape on it there the sound can still come from the back of the speaker which is typically inside the device that has its own cavity so maybe I use the medicine bottle cap to cover behind it too oops I think I put a ton of air pressure in there release the air pressure cover the hole again Good, very little sound is coming out of it. Now, we drill a hole in there. Did it make much of a difference? Let's do a frequency response. Not much at all, we need more holes. Damn it, I just cracked the whole thing. <laughs> Let's see the frequency response of this. <laughs> Look at this. Our misfortune actually created a lucky bump at around 1 kilohertz that we needed. <laughs> Just listen to it. Pretty loud, eh? Well, to test a bit more, I covered more than half of the hole with some flexible electric tape and see, it pushed the peak down at 1 kilohertz and send it further towards lower frequency. Maybe a bit larger hole helps a little bit better. Yeah, I just cut the opening a little bit wider like this <laughs> look at the massive peak at one kilohertz and it seems we have some peaks at the harmonics too which is fine our speaker volume without the chamber was more like this and now it's like this and of course now we can make it even louder by increasing the voltage amplitude such high voltages would typically be above the rating of the speaker and could damage it if applied continuously. But in my application, I only momentarily use it. See, for example, here I have a 12 ohm half a watt resistor and I'm gonna put 12 volt across it, which means 12 watts of power, 24 times the rating of the resistor. But if I do it momentarily, the current reading is off actually. Pick, pick. See, the resistor is still alive, but if I do it continuously, that's when the resistor gets damaged. So as long as we do it momentarily, oh sh we should be fine. Here in my application, I want the chamber resonance to match my sound frequency because I want the maximum level. But in typical voice and music speakers, they push this resonance frequency outside the audible frequency band by reducing the chamber volume and increasing the hole size. This is because we typically want a flat response, not a bulge erected in the middle of our pant band. Now it's time to drive this circuit. I'm gonna put a simple circuit together and then I'll explain it. Damn it, I guess it will grow back. And it's done. It runs on two AA batteries with switch and everything. And works perfectly. The circuit is quite simple if you're an electrical engineer. So the circuit is powered by two AA batteries through the switch and capacitor. Of course, there is no reverse polarity protection. So we better not plug in the batteries backwards. And then we have a Schmidt trigger oscillator circuit that creates a square wave here and a triangular wave there. And we take the triangular wave because it's much easier to filter into a sine wave. We use a simple low pass RC filter to turn the triangular wave into a sine wave, which also drops its amplitude. So 
we need a gain stage to bring the signal level back up and feed it into the speaker. And here's the list of component values if you care to know. Here is the square waveform of the Schmidt trigger and the triangularish waveform that is filtered into a sine waveish waveform that is amplified. And I can also use a foot switch to keep my hands free when I'm swearing. Good, eh? Okay, let's try it. Once someone told me, you'll wake them up tomorrow, get your together and finish what you started or I'll slap the out of you. And I told him, who the you think you are trying to dictate my life? And he said, I'm you. <laughs> it works. See, there you thought it was a simple project and yet you learned a ton from it. And you'll learn a ton more if you visit my sponsor Curiosity Stream. I especially found this documentary on the history of electricity quite interesting. It shows those primitive awesome experiments we don't do much anymore and really brings me back to the roots of electricity. And gives me some good video ideas too. And of course, Curiosity Stream is the home to thousands of very well-made documentaries and non-fiction titles from science, nature, history, technology, society, and lifestyle. And it is available worldwide on many different platforms like web app, Ruko, Android, Xbox One, Smart TV, iOS, Chromecast, Amazon Fire, Amazon Kindle, Apple TV. I mean only $14.99 for a whole year of some of the best knowledge and science documentaries out there is an absolute steal. So make sure to follow my link curiositystream.com slash electroboom and make use of this promotion. And thank you for watching.